Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a DIY electric mountain board. From scratch, component parts, all the way to a fully ripping, shredding dirt machine. Let's do this. Now welded guys. So all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna bend the bus bar over, just like that. That's our main battery positive. Done. Now to do the same on the other side for the negative. Oh, right then guys, both main battery power leads are on. So we have a 10S 8P battery with output uh, connections ready to go to the board. The only thing we have to do now is we have to think about charging. And for that we have a BMS. Um, this is a battery management system. And this is gonna make sure that this whole pack stays balanced the whole time. What this does is it controls, it monitors the charging of the batteries, monitors the individual cell voltages, and then it discharges individual cells to bring them all to the same level. So this one's a little bit complicated. I'm going to put the diagram on the screen. This is for my BMS. All BMSs are completely different. None of them are made equal. I'm going to put the diagram for mine on the screen now. Um, yours may differ and I'm gonna connect mine up like that. So guys, we've got to solder wires onto the pack for the balance leads. Um, so we're not gonna solder them directly onto the pack because we don't want to put heat into the pack. Uh, we're gonna do it off the pack and then we're gonna spot weld those um, bits of nickel onto the pack. So let me show you this. This is what I've got left from six meters of nickel. So if you wanna build this pack yourself, you need six meters. This should just do the balance connections and then no more nickel required and no more welding, man. So far, I reckon I've done two and a half thousand welds on this pack, so I'll be glad not to weld anymore. But um, the cheap Arduino welder has done well. So I'm just gonna fire on with connecting the BMS. I'll show you how to do it. Um, but you have to understand that the wiring of your BMS is gonna probably be slightly different to mine, so let's go. I've just double checked that the pack actually does fit into my enclosure, and as you can see, there's not a lot of room. There's a bit of room for the BMS and to run the wires. One of these wires has to run along the pack at the back. There is a little bit of room. It's gonna be very tight, but that's good. We want it to be tight. And then these wires are gonna exit the pack and go to this wire here on the board, which goes off to the speed controllers. So looking good so far, nothing to complain about. Um, get the BMS installed. Here's the wires you get with BMS. And here's my circuit diagrams. These wires are all of these individual wires here that go to the balance port on the BMS. We also have the charger, and a few other wires to connect, so yeah. Crack on with that, guys. So here we go then, guys. The balance leads are all connected now, and they've been, the first wire goes to the first positive of the first cell, so that's battery negative, and that's S1 positive, S2, S3, S4, all the way up to the battery positive, which is the last wire. So now that's done. <clears throat> it's time to wrap the pack in Kapton tape, connect the BMS, connect the charger port, um, and there's a couple of wires that need to go uh, to these, the charger wires and stuff, that we'll put in in a minute. Right, so guys, this is Captain tape. It's heat resistant and also electrically resistant tape. I'm just going to carefully wrap pack in the tape. Thank you. 
And there we go, guys, the culmination of a couple of days worth of work on and off. Um, fitting it around work, it's, it's been interesting. But uh, the pack is complete, the balance wires are on, the main power wires are on, the whole thing is wrapped up safely and soundly. So, all we've got to do now is put it into the case and connect up the charge port, which I have here, and um, we can charge it, see if it charges. I'm excited. This board is nearly finished. Right, we have a few more connections to make on the BMS. We have to do a connection from battery minus to B minus. Is this one here to B minus on the BMS? So I cut a small slit here. I'm going to wrap. Cut a small slit here. I'm going to wrap some cable around it. I'm going to solder that on. Bit of heat shrink. And there's our B minus. Right, nice and safe. So that's going to be our B minus connection. Going like that. So we'll solder that on. Why not? I like to fill it with solder. Push the wire through and you end up with that. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to snip off the excess. That's our B minus connection done. And then the only other thing we need to do is we need to put charger minus and charger plus to there. Right guys, things are going to get a little tricky because I need to put the power port in and the wires solder to the BMS. Then I need to wrap the BMS attach it to the pack and then get the whole thing in there which is going to be interesting so let's go two things we've got to check the diameter of this bad boy so we know how big of a hole to drill seven mil seven mil hole now what we need to do is we need to identify which one of these pins is positive and which one is negative because we don't want to fire. Okay, so the short pin is positive. Short pin is positive. I'm positive the short pin is positive. So there's our positive heat shrink. Now unfortunately guys, I don't have any red wire. Bit of a mistake, but there you go. There's that positive. And I should have already cut a piece of wire for the negative. Oh. Right, that's the charge port done, guys. So, charger minus goes to P minus. So, we have to strip these and just check which one of these is minus. Is it 
you. No. Charge a minus. So this bit is incredibly boring, guys. P minus. So we should have continuity between charge minus and P minus. Yes. Charge plus goes to battery plus, and that is it, guys. We're done. P minus goes to the charge minus. P minus goes to battery minus. Charge plus goes to batch positive and then they go on there and then that's it we've got to get this in there and then we're good it's in there just a little close Oh guys, one battery pack. Oh, does she charge? And there you go, guys. She charges. Woohoo! All I gotta do now is put an XT90 on there, get it on there, and then we can do ball setup. I skipped forward a little bit, hope you don't mind. Um, basically, I just put the XT90 on the battery case, and I put an XT90. Well, I've shortened these wires, put an XT90 there, and also just two tie wraps there to keep it on. I'll do something a bit nicer with that, and I'll braid these wires in the future, but we're out of time. Um, put a bit of Velcro on the board there. This is just standard Velcro. I also put some on the box. That'll be enough to hold the board, hold the box of the board properly. I'll be able to lift the board up by the box, so. So the next stage, guys, is to fit the battery box onto the board. Well, basically just connect the Velcro bits together and plug it in and see if it works. So yeah, I always get a little bit nervous uh, when I'm doing stuff like this on the board because it all could go terribly wrong if you've miswired something or, or anything like that. But I'm pretty confident I've got everything right. So let's put the box on the board and plug it in. So yeah, I want to get this pretty Pretty central. That'll do. And these two have easy access to each other. Right, okay guys, now we've got the battery box installed on the board. There's only one thing left to do, and that is connect it to the VESCs. You can see that I've actually um, gone ahead and heat shrinked the bullet connectors up. That's because in the latest version of the VESC tool, you can um, reliably switch these into forwards and reverse. You may have been able to do that reliably before. I don't know, I never tried it. I always had it the right way around um, mechanically, but I believe that now you can do that okay. So, quick look at the enclosure. I think it fits in quite nicely. I was, I'm really impressed with that again, guys. Look, where we managed to get everything in that little box. Hopefully there'll be no interference all these wires been so close together. I don't think there will be, but um, you never know. We'll have to wait and see. So yeah, um, the, the next thing really is to connect these two uh, XT90s together and um, yeah, see what happens. Hopefully we get lights over here. Oh, oh dear. Hopefully you saw that. Mm, there's a spark in the XT90, which means the anti-spark switch didn't work. So, we have lights on both of the controllers and the receiver's flashing, that's good to not bound. But hopefully, this is the remote I'm using. 
um, Alien Power Systems. I think it's called Alien Command. It's a pretty cheap one. And it's got two power switches for some reason. Okay, that's now, they're bound. Okay, that's fine. Let's turn that off for now. So yeah. Really, the only thing left to do now is to get on the computer and install these correctly. Yeah, quite interestingly, with the um, XC90 sparking, that means that the anti-spark switch isn't working. The LED's on. But that seems to have no effect. And that means the anti-spark switch is completely dead, guys. Which is a little bit disappointing um, because we only just fitted it. But I do have an anti-spark switch pro from Flipski, so I'll probably, well, I'm gonna have to replace that anti-spark switch. Yeah, anyway, at least all of the speed controllers, all the lights came on, receiver came on, so I'll show you. That's all fully lit up. And this one up here is also lit up. Receivers on and waiting for a connection. So the next thing, guys, is to uh, take the board to the computer and we need to install all of the VESC um, settings onto the motor controllers and that will enable us then to go out for a test drive finally. Um, so yeah, join me on the computer and we'll go through all of this stuff together and get the board ready to go.